studio event, y'all. Live in the studio. Game is here. We got a whole room full of amazing people. My studio yeah. audience. Make some noise one time, y'all. One time. Whoa, 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 whoa. That 1992 album dropping in a couple weeks, man. October 7th. Game is here. What up, homie? I'm chilling. Game. That record that just went off, man. Yeah. It was... It was it was chock full of bars. You said yeah. a lot of a lot of dope shit, like, as you always do. And then um and then you start going and then you start going in a little bit on on, on Meek. So I want to know I want to hear from you what because you know there's the elephant in the room behind the drum kit. He's right yeah. there. So we're gonna address that motherfucker. What what started that whole rift that beat between you two? What happened was um, we was in the club and um it was Meek first time back in L.A. since his whole house arrest so he couldn't move. So what I did was um you know. Um, I rock. I've been. I was rocking with him for you know for a minute. So I sent him uh, a, bottle, a bottle of rosé, you know, as a you know right. welcome back, you know what I'm saying type of thing. And then I went over there and I told him, you know what I'm saying, because that that was my man. I told him. I said lately in L.A., you know, it's been getting robbed. You know, I'm still censoring myself. Motherfuckers been getting <laughs> robbed. And uh, yeah, so I told him, motherfuckers been getting robbed out here. Like niggas is you know, and niggas is really robbing niggas for their shit every day. It, it's happening. So I was like, you know, watch your back, you know what I'm saying? And before, you know what I'm saying, leave a little bit earlier than, you know what I'm saying, you might normally leave. So so you can get the fuck out of here while, you know, without niggas seeing or following or whatever. So uh, him and Sean Kingston, they tables was next to each other. I don't really fuck with Sean Kingston like that, so I didn't have to warn him. Plus, he R&B niggas don't really, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Meek leaves the club, you know what I'm saying, like an hour later, whatever. And then uh, Sean Kingston got robbed. You know what I'm saying? So he got robbed, knocked in the head, took his jury. They ran through his crew and whatnot. And so we left. And, uh, you know, I left. And uh, later, Sean Kingston called me like 15 minutes after that and was like, gang, that's fucked up. Me told me that you set me up. Wow. He told me that you told him to leave the club early so you can get me. Wow. And I'm like. It's not what happened. That shit crazy. And so a lot of people were saying like, yo, where's the paperwork? Yo, this nigga didn't snitch on me and sit and tell the feds that I have birds in my trunk. There's no paperwork for right. a club incident. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't no paperwork. So before I left, police came to knock on my door. Detectives came to knock on my door and said, you know what I'm saying, asking me questions and, you know what I'm saying, asking me, was it somebody in my entourage? And, you know, Sean and, and Meek told Sean and Sean said that Meek told him that it was somebody in my entourage. Did I told detectives, man, get the fuck away from my house. Slammed the door, got on the plane. Here I'm we here. Are. Right. But So I'm saying, uh, you know, the, the snitching, the ratting to me, it happened between Meek and Sean Kingston. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he went put a wire on and went and right. you know got me 25 to life and ain't that type of situation it's just a, i i gave i put I'm, i privy you to what was going on in the city and so you could cover your ass and you know saying just be aware and then you went and turned that into some other shit man so with with that being said because you guys had a, a mutual respect for one another and obviously you know you sent them the bottle of rose and all that could you guys have situated that situation and squashed it and handled it a different way without it spilling out into if he ain't lie about it so what happened was i got meek on the phone and i was like you told sean that he was like i ain't tell that fat motherfucker nothing so i said <laughs> hey damn that's a little key snitching too my bad no i'm fucking <laughs> with you nah so he said i ain't tell that i ain't tell him nothing so i said you know what we're gonna fix this call sean kingston on three-way it's sean kingston me meek on a three-way and, uh, you know, he going off on Sean Kingston. I ain't tell you nothing. Sean Kingston saying, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And he's saying, and he saying, motherfucker, you bitch ass nigga. So I just hung up the phone, man. Because I'm like. Right. We don't have time for that. I can't, man. So uh, after the, you know, after the detectives that came to my crib, I was like, yo, that's wild. But I still held it to myself. But then I got drunk. And you know how this Patron do. I got drunk in Miami <laughs> one night. I'm in Miami, man. And, and you know what I'm saying? I'm partying. And I got drunk, and you know, you tell the truth, and it come out. So yeah. I grabbed a mic, and I'm like, out of nowhere, I'm like, fuck Meek Mill. And myself was like, hey, huh? Why, why'd you say that? And then, you know what I'm saying? And so from then, I had to I had to ride it out. And so that's what we're doing. And so he he um he uh said what he had to say with some memes and whatever. We got Instagrams, and so it went back and forth. And then he fucked up. He got my favorite beat of now, which is the Young M.A. beat. Shout out to Young M.A. Make young some noise for Young M.A. Yo, in this motherfucker. Hey, I met Young M.A. last night. She hella cool. Super cool. But yeah, I love that beat, right? I love that song. It reminds me of the Shmoney. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. That that beat, the uh, Bobby Shmurdy. Yeah, shout out to the Shmurdy's as well, yeah, GS9. Both of them, man. Hold your head. Um, so, uh, uh, so he jumped on that beat, and then he did the ultimate fuckery. He went and got beans right. to help. So... 
I got love for beans. So when he did that, I was hurt, like genuinely hurt. I'm like, this fucked up. I fuck with Beans. Beans fuck with me. Beans, we we rock. We've been in Cali together. We talk. I always look out and, you know, I call him, ask him how he doing. Like, that's Beanie Siegel. Right. Like, when I was a young nigga, like, that's... Yeah, that's the Matt, Broad Street. Daddy, Daddy, that's Matt. young scrappy. Right. No, he ain't the OG, OG gangster. gangster. Yes, yes, I is. is. Don't test that. It's Fire Beans. Shit like, I'm, a, right. I'm a fan. I'm like a... It's his fucking Beanie Siegel and he's... He on a record with Meek on some Philly shit, and he's saying, L.A. only three hours away. And I was like, well, Beans, it's not. It's five hours away. <laughs> number one, number one, and you know, number- Beans been down for a minute. He might have forgot time transfer over. I mean, nigga, unless they got a Philly in Texas, my nigga. <laughs> so, so, hey, so basically, Beans, uh, I heard it, and he said, don't make me come out of retirement. And now, to me, I know Beanie work. I know he- in work in the streets I know he a gangster And he do his shit It's the Broad Street Bully And he was scaring niggas On records Like when I was in high school Good Listening job. to them shit So Don't make me cut him out Of retirement And LA only three hours away Sounds like he'll come And fuck me He's saying he'll fuck me up In LA Right So I said I was in South Carolina Ain't no studios in South Carolina. At least I couldn't find one. <laughs> I was looking behind motherfucking farms And all kind of shit I ain't find no yeah, studio They got in the back of the barn They got them So I said Yo I might have to cancel North Carolina so I can go to New York because I need to get off in, in the studio and get my shit off. The niggas is on the, my favorite beat, you know what I'm saying? And he got beans on there, and I just, I gotta, I gotta air niggas out. So I went and did the North Carolina show, and I got halfway through the show, and I gotta apologize for the fans in North Carolina because even though I put on a great, like, I, I put on like a two-hour show, which is a lot more than I get paid for, but I love it. I love doing it. The fans do it, but I cut it short because I had to get on the bus because I wanted to get to New York so I can I felt like the time right man. he just like time is no I had me, these yeah. fucking bars right, inside me is, they wanted to oh, get no, out he heard the bars I they had was, the bars <laughs> inside me I was they was in my head and I just had nowhere in fucking right you Carolina go. to get right. it off I, go. I don't got J. Cole number no more I don't know what he <laughs> recorded in North Carolina but I couldn't figure it out so we got on the bus I'm on the bus drive at motherfucking I'm telling this nigga drive he like I can only do 70 <laughs> I, it, you're gonna get me in trouble game I rock God, with you so crazy. anyway I made him do like 72 right. but we got here in like respectfully 72 we got here in like nine hours as soon I'm talking about I ain't getting no sleep I ain't I dropped my shit off at the hotel I ain't go upstairs I went straight to quad and I got, I start, I start going in. I got like the first 12 bars in. I was like, we got some shit. We got some shit. We can put a little Kanye, little skit right here. And after this, after the Kanye skit, I'm fucking beams off. I, and, and while I was writing it, while I was doing it, I felt bad the whole time. And I'm like, I don't want to do this to Beanie Siegel, but this, this nigga right. about to, he, I'm about to That's smash right. this nigga. So I went in on Siegel and then I just finished the whole shit. And then I, after it's done, it was about eight o'clock in the morning. I had to be on Wendy Williams at nine. I still ain't took a fucking shower, so I had to have my assistant run somewhere to one of y'all stores that don't close like y'all eyes. I'm just <laughs> we rolling, we rolling. And I got me a little. I put me together a little fit. Went on Wendy. Still no shower. Luckily, ain't nobody sniff. And, <laughs> and then we put the song out. By the time I got off Wendy, that shit was everywhere. Niggas was putting L's everywhere, and I was just making sure them shits wasn't on my page. <laughs> and yeah, we got it in, man. And that shit is like one of that. It when I when I. When I did it, after I finished it and listened to it, and after it hit the internet, I felt like it, I felt when 300 bars dropped, and so I knew exactly what it was, and that nigga's done. You live for this type of shit, game. Niggas, you would think niggas understand that by now. <laughs> he's, he's, listen, he's, he's tried and true and tested and, and game proven. Don't fuck with game, I don't man. think no, like, A-list rappers after this is going, like, they not going to do it. Mark, we got that pest control over there? Let's do that. Let's get that. Let's get that. This shit right here is fresh. Let's get that going. This shit fresh as fuck. This shit make me feel like I'm a new, like a brand new nigga that nobody (laughs) never heard. And yeah, yeah, this shit fresh. Nigga, I'm 36 (laughs) with bars. Nigga, I'm fucking this shit. This shit dope, man. Game is here. It's Hip Hop Nation. We about to keep it rocking, man. You know how we do it. I don't mean to cut you off. No, it's okay. It's all right. When we come back after this, I'm going to tell you a story about being 36. Okay. And what, like, just a funny story to just. Tell people shit's funny as fuck. We stay right here on the tour. That's it. We got a funny 36 story right after this. One love, Jerome Bettis. We live. Everybody else might not be live anymore. Shit just got severe. Tour guy, tour Ray. We got a studio audience in here. Make some motherfucking noise. And it's game time. Game is here. What's good, homie? You know, I'm cooling. You cooling now after yeah, that? I'm you straight chilling. now? Yeah, man. <laughs> so. 
let me let me let me ask you this because we do have the story we're gonna get to about being 36 how do we rectify the situation it's a lot going on in the world you yeah. know what i'm saying and you do a lot i know you sat with with snoop and <laughs> some of the lapd and you know we're trying to get to a place where you know we we respect in our lives yeah. and we respect in and we looking for respect from from everybody else and we know how these situations get you know what i'm saying it's never usually the main artist it's usually the entourage it's usually somebody trying to come up trying to get a chain or a bigger chain or right. you know what i'm saying like and these things can get out of hand so what do we do to fix this I don't know what y'all do. <laughs> Game, what do you what do you and Meek do to, to fix this, to keep it? You know, I mean, the sport of hip hop is is amazing and is and is built off of shit like this, you know, yeah. going back and forth on wax and all that. But people get in their feelings and they see the one too many memes and then shit goes left. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I really don't want it. I really don't want it to go there, cause right. if it go there, I mean, you know what I'm saying I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he got niggas with him that's about it, and I got niggas with me that's about it. I don't really gotta go. I don't really go to Philly that often. I haven't been to Philly in like seven years. Um, Sidebar: You gonna be there tomorrow? I'll be there tomorrow. Um, Jesus. thing is that L.A. Him and him and um, Nikki just bought a house in L.A. That's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. I could manipulate the streets if I want to. I'm getting phone calls, niggas asking me what I want them to do. I told them nothing. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't that. I want, I wanted to be a man to man, meet up with that dude and throw, throw some hands. You know what I'm saying? There ain't nothing wrong with that. It's just Dundee. that's what niggas do when it's that's man know, shit. It's man shit. Well, some women don't understand it. Some people don't understand it. And you don't have to understand it. And I'm not here to make you understand. I'm here to live my life exactly the way that I want to. There's a lot of people that say, oh, game, you're a hypocrite. One day you marching, you know, and you're trying to do for peace, and now you beefing. Well, on that day, I felt like I needed to march for peace. On this day, I feel like this nigga tripping, and I got, I got, like, I'm tripping. <laughs> got it. So I don't got to be Jesse Jackson for, for people. I don't got to do that. I don't have to be, a, a, you know, a, a, a peace leader 100% of my life. Mm -hmm. I can be exactly what I want to be. I set good examples, and I set some fucked up ones. It's, I'm human. Sure and, and, and if you put the magnifying glass on everything, Everyone who's ridiculing somebody else, there's inconsistencies in everybody's life. One day you wake up and you, I mean, just something as simple as changing your outfit three times before you go to work. What are you, are you bipolar because you can't pick a color? No, you just human. You know what I'm saying? You're making decisions. I make decisions. Some of them are righteous and, um, and some of them are not. Um, do I know that my decisions are fucked up when they fucked up? Yes, because I make them and they're well thought they're well thought out. If I make a fucked up decision, you're like, oh, he tripping. I thought it out. It was strategic and I said that we gonna fuck up today. And then I'm and then I went and did it. And I don't gotta be the staple of shit for shit for nobody. I just gotta be game. And I get a lot more game I love what you're doing than game I hate what you're doing. So I'm doing all right. No doubt, no doubt. Clap it up for that, man. Now we're gonna move off that motherfucking subject. You the show y'all how is, to be human. Elephant is out out of the room now. Um, tell me your, your funny story about being thirty six. All right, so it's funny shit. This shit is don't have shit to do with shit, but this funny shit that I went through. Special moment hey, you, on hey, you see how many shits I'm throwing out here now that I know it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so look, I'm like, what inspired me to be a rapper? Like a rapper was Ether. Okay. Um, when Ether came out, it was like 1999. I was freshman year in college, and yeah, nigga, yeah, nigga, it was gang banging and still try to go to college. I tried, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, give it a shot. Give I gave the old it a shot, man. Try. So yeah, I was, uh, you know, Ether came out, and that was like everything. And not to, the takeover was good. Takeover was good, but Ether was like crazy, right? So on this one part, when um, um, Nas says you 36 in the karate class. <laughs> That shit, like, was one of them bars that J I know Jay felt like, right. shit. How did he know? <laughs> Crazy. So anyway, I'm 36. It was like two months ago. <laughs> I meet a chick, right? That's how it usually she starts. She tell me we gonna go to, like, some hot yoga. I really like the chick, so I'm go to hot yoga. I'm trying to get in. I'm trying to, like, figure it out. So I'm trying to support whatever it is that she want. And I know if I, I tell her we gonna go do this, she gonna, we rocking with mm -hmm. each other. I go to this yoga shit and um, it's like a three hour class. It's more than yoga. So we do the hot ass yoga. I damn near die, pass out Russ on some Russell Simmons shit. Like, I don't know how they got my legs crossed. I'm feeling like a pretzel on a fucking <laughs> twister game. So anyway, man, um, after the after the um, the the fucking hot yoga, this motherfucking 
to jujitsu motherfucker come in and he's like yeah now it's time to work off that you know you can't be tired because you know yoga is like to relax right. you now so they do some shit um called bikram yoga and then after you work out and you just sweat out and it, you sweat out all the toxins fat and all that shit and so uh, i get up and i'm ready i'm amp i'm doing all the jujitsu shit to this music this pit bull that's playing pit bull that's how i know the pit bull is winning it's just <laughs> nigga, they playing pit bull in elevators now target and like in jujitsu classes that nigga get money so yeah Halfway through this karate shit, I'm like, I'm 36 in a fucking karate <laughs> class. This shit. <laughs> this shit is- I left. You had to roll out? I'm out. I'm out. I left. I ain't told nobody that story. <laughs> I just wanted to share that shit. I got the fuck out of there. And yeah. He didn't want to let Nas down, man. Yeah, hey, I, 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 le- I, I, hey, I left the chick too. And I, he, I talked to her twice after that. And we got into it over why I left. And, and she said that I didn't follow through. And so I was just like, I never told her why though. Right. But yeah, that shit, fuck it. I don't she like listen it. to hip hop. It's cool. Got it. I, yeah, I gotta <laughs> find somebody new. Now, the album is coming in 1992. Uh, October 14th is, yeah. is the date. What what keeps you motivated to keep dropping, man? This is your seventh studio album. In between there, you know, we don't have that much time, but you dropped the Streets of Compton. Yeah. You got the video game, um, Block Wars, and that music came with that. What keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? Uh, I just showed you. My kid, this, this nigga be texting pictures of what he, he needs. He definitely, just definitely me, needed the new these Yeezys. These new Yeezys are coming out. I need the Yeezys. And you know stuff like that, man. Just my kids. I use my kids for motivation all the time. I don't even think they know if um if I wake up in the morning, I look at them, and and I can I can almost immediately turn around, walk out the door, and go find some money. That's, That's just is. how it is. That's I love them, is. and I and I gotta be. I gotta take care of them. A lot of people say, well, you know, you only got 18 years. No kids be with you. Them niggas be needing shit for like when they 30. Yeah, forever. So dad, yeah. Um, I mean, my house just got foreclosed on. Man. <laughs> you know, you got to be there for the long haul, man. So, uh, yeah, my kids, man, strictly, that's that's my motivation. No doubt, no doubt. As it is, my man. Now, before I let you go, because we did go over time a little bit, but it's all right, we're going to figure that out. Um, I read somewhere that you said, and I didn't see it yet, but I know that Benny Benny Boom did an amazing job with All Eyes on Me. Yeah. I'm a Brooklyn nigga, though, so. And he directed the Tupac movie right. coming. You said, you said that. The, the Tupac movie makes the Biggie movie. I'm not, hey, I'm going to tell you what. Before you say Before that. Before I finish. I talked to Puff. He told me, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, he said, you're my friend. <laughs> don't do that. And okay. you know what? When I said it, I said it in all honesty. And it is, it, it it really is a better movie. But the way that I said it was just, you know. It's one of those moments. And I, and I love Biggie to death, man. I mean, I love Biggie. Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Biggie is one of my favorite artists, man. I, it wasn't it said in a disrespectful thing. So on behalf of Puff and all the bottles of Ciroc he's sending to my house right. for free, I got to, you know. Yo, yeah. Puff, send a couple of bottles this way, too. No, nope, you just yeah. try to bring it up. No, I no had bottles. to. I'm from Brooklyn. You get, you get an aqua How am I supposed to go back to Brooklyn yeah. if I don't bring it up, game? No, you get I got to be good. I, send I him drink, some aqua hydrate. I drink that shit, too. I need water anyway. Listen, hey. man, clap it up for game. Hey, man. Make sure y'all get out there. Hey. Y'all get that album, 1992, yeah. October 14th. Thank you for always coming through, it's my always G. always love, man. Always, always love, man. You know, anytime you got something, we roll the carpet out. We make it happen. We're going to get back into the music. It's Hip Hop yeah. Nation. You tour got straight hip hop hits, period. Let's go. Don't let them make y'all think I'm a bad guy, man. I'm just nah, a guy. I'm just a just, guy. We just watching what you're doing out That's here, gang. man. Watch me. <laughs> I do some fucked up shit sometimes. <laughs>